Hello. In this video, we are going to derive expressions for the rate of unimolecular reactions in the gas phase. Our method will follow the treatment of Lindemann, Christensen, and Hinchelwood. Suppose that two gas molecules, each of which we're going to represent with the letter A, collide. And in the process of this collision, they form an activated complex, A star. So that is a A molecule that has enough energy to react. And one of the molecules will not have enough energy. So in the process of collision, energy will transfer from one A molecule to another A molecule. And this will happen with a rate constant, which we will call K1. K1. Let's also suppose that we can have the activated molecule A collide with an unactivated molecule A. So A star collides with A to form two deactivated A molecules. So this is the reversed reaction to the forward reaction. And let's suppose that this reaction occurs with the rate K2. So left to right is K1. Going from right to left is K2. Once the activated molecule, the activated complex A star is created, it can then go on to form the product of the unimolecular reaction. And we assume that this happens with a rate constant of K3 and that there is no reverse reaction. So once A star forms, it proceeds to rate to the um, product P with a rate constant of K3. Now notice to form A star, This is going to happen at a rate K1, that's the rate constant, and we see since we need the collision of two A molecules, this is going to be second order with respect to the concentration of A. Now notice that there's two different ways that we can decrease the concentration of A star. So notice that this is all with reference to A star. So notice that if we go left, we turn from having one A star molecule to having zero. So we actually decrease the concentration of A star. And that's going to happen with a rate constant K2. And that depends on the concentration of A star and also the concentration of just A itself. So that's one way that we can lose uh, some of our concentration of A star. But we also have a second way and that is when we have A star here proceeding to form the product. And this is going to happen with a rate, rate constant K3 times the concentration of A star. So the rate is K3 times A star. And that is the decrease in A star, just as we have another mechanism for the decrease in the concentration of A star. From what we've already worked out here, we can actually write an expression for the rate of change in the concentration of A star. So the change in a star, the concentration of A star, as a function of time, well, there's a part that has to do with the increase in the concentration of A star. And we've already seen that that's equal to K1 times the concentration of A squared. We also have two different means by which we can decrease the concentration. The first is 
going left in this reaction. So we see that's going to be minus K2. Since it's a decrease, we have to put a minus sign. And that's multiplied by the concentration of A star times the concentration of A. And the second cause for a decrease in the concentration of A star is that A star goes on to form product with a rate constant of K3 and a rate of K3 times the concentration of A star. So we notice that when we form this expression for the rate of change of the concentration of A star, that in any case where A is increasing, so we have formation of A, we have a plus sign here, and any case where we have a decrease in the concentration of A star, such as going to the left here or going to the right there, we have to proceed the rate constant with a minus sign. Since A star is an intermediate, and we imagine that intermediates will not have a high concentration, that means over the course of time, the rate of change in that small concentration is probably going to be very small. So here we can apply the steady state approximation and we set that the rate of change of this particular quantity to be exactly equal to zero. Applying the steady state approximation gives us next that K2 times the concentration of A star times the concentration of A plus K3 times the concentration of A star is equal to K1 times the concentration of A squared. factor the concentration of A star out of the left hand side and that gives us inside the parentheses K2 times the concentration of A plus K3 And the right-hand side stays the same with K1 times the concentration of A squared. We can now divide each side by K2 times the concentration of A plus K3, and that gives us an expression for the concentration of A star. And we see that's going to be We have K1 times the concentration of A squared divided by K2 times the concentration of A plus K3. This does not seem like a simple expression, and it's going to get slightly more complicated in the next step. But if you bear through that, we will actually be able to develop simple expressions that are intuitively uh, clear. Now that we have an expression for the concentration of a star, we can actually develop an expression for the rate of production of the product. And so we have the change in the concentration of P as a function of time, is simply equal to the rate constant K3 times the concentration of A star.
we can now substitute our expression for a star into this expression here. And this gives us that the rate of production is going to be equal to k1 times k3 times the concentration of a squared divided by k2 times the concentration of A plus K3. This expression looks quite confusing because in the numerator, we have the concentration of A squared, which suggests a second order type reaction, whereas the denominator has the first power of the concentration of A, which suggests a first order reaction. And we'll see that there are two extreme cases. So the first case we'll call case one. And here we're going to assume that K2, three constant K2, times the concentration of A is much, much greater than the value of the rate constant K3. If we make that assumption, that tells us that the denominator is going to be equivalent to simply K2 times the concentration of A. So the overall rate of formation of our product, the numerator is going to stay the same we have K1 times K3 times the concentration of A squared divided by K2 times the concentration of A. So long as the concentration of A is not zero, we can divide through by concentration of A. And that gives us that the rate is equal to K1 times K3 divided by K2. And this is times the concentration of A to the first power. So it shows in the limit that K2 times the concentration of A is much greater than K3. So that means uh, the rate of uh, deactivation of a star is much faster than the, for the uh, transfer or the path of a star going to product. So if that's true, if it deactivates faster than it turns into product, then the overall rate of the reaction is first order. For case two, let's look at the other extreme, where now the rate constant K3 is much larger than the product of the rate constant K2 times the concentration of A. With this assumption, that gives us that the denominator of the rate expression is going to be simply K3. So that gives us, now that the rate is equal to K1, times K3 times concentration of A squared divided by, now the denominator is just going to be K3. Well, we see immediately that we can cancel the K3s, and that gives us that the overall rate at this extreme is going to be equal to K1 times the concentration of A squared. So at this extreme, we see that the rate is actually second order because we have the second power of the concentration of A. So depending upon the values of the concentration of A and or the rate constants, 
we see that unimolecular reactions in the gas phase can give us rates that appear to be either first order and or second order at the extremes. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.